Hello. How to handle neurotypicals? It may seem at times a bit difficult, but if you understand a few basic things about them, actually it's not all that impossible. I'm Abel Abelson, writer of Setting Free the Intellectually Gifted and also I the Fly. See the links in the description. And so let's have a look at how to handle neurotypicals. Basically, if you want to be able to handle neurotypicals in the most efficient way so that it entails a minimum of suffering for you and for them, you have to understand how their mind works, how their brain works. Because we start from the principle, as always, that there is neurodivergence, that there is a big difference in neurology between the, for instance, intellectually gifted, Asperger's, people on the autism spectrum and stuff like that, and neurotypicals. It's neurological. So you have a kind of almost other subspecies of humans there. We are a subspecies more or less apart or on, on a kind of extreme on the scale. And they're another subspecies in the middle of different scales. So taking this difference in neurology uh, into account, one can actually accomplish a lot of things. And so how do they work? Compared to how I function, uh, it helps me to see neurotypicals as people who are mentally short-sighted. It's relative, eh? but from my point of view, they are mentally short-sighted, which means that their scope, their mental scope of perception and of reflection doesn't go very far around their little person. This is not inferior, this is not a problem in such, if one understands that it is like that and if one doesn't try to push things in another direction. There are lots of kinds of uh, life forms on earth, they all have extremely different uh, characteristics sometimes and no characteristic is better or worse than another. No characteristic is as such a problem if one really realizes how this characteristic uh, works and what it means. So basically neurotypicals are like mentally short-sighted which actually means that if you want to have a relationship with them, you always have to be ready to fight or negotiate. On the contrary, with people who are like me, if I meet people who are like me, we will take a theme and discuss the theme. We will take a relationship and discuss the relationship, treat the relationship uh, from a standpoint of seeing uh, everything in this relationship. Not from my point of view only, not from the point of view of the other person only, but from a general point of view and try to make everyone better as one body in this relationship. However, with neurotypicals it's different. You have to be ready to fight or negotiate. When I say you have to ready, be ready to, to fight, it's like if you have to um, go towards them with a mental and physical stance of no problem, I, I'm ready to fight with you, it's okay, no problem, if you fight, I'll handle it and I'm not here to be uh, crushed or abused or something like that, I'm not here neither to crush you but I am ready to fight, I am ready to stand my ground or I am ready to uh, do some mental or even physical Aikido moves on you. If you attack me, it won't go very well for you. This is the kind of stance you need when approaching a neurotypical. If you don't have this stance and it will show in your face, in your eyes, in your physical, in your body language, if you don't have this stance, they will, as they only think in their own little sphere, they will abuse you. It's not, from their point of view, it's not abuse. 
we feel it as abuse because we see things in a different way and if we would act like they act, it would be conscious abuse. Coming from them is just how they work. And once you have passed the stage where you're just uh, complaining and complaining about things that you don't like in the world, and you start observing things, accepting them as they are, and taking, the, taking data as data and variables as variables, but a lot of what you now think are variables actually are data, like for instance how neurotypicals act, it's a given, it's not a variable. So once you pass your stage of complaining, there are actually a lot of problems that cease to be problems. They become things that are there and that you can very easily handle actually. And by handle I mean you can go into it, you can avoid it, you can do whatever you need to do to handle this thing apart from trying to change it as it is where it is. So if you go towards the neurotypical with this stance of I'm ready to fight, no problem, they will notice this and they will treat you differently because of course they also have their part of fear, they also have their hierarchical stuff etc. They don't want trouble actually but if they think they can uh, crush you easily and get some advantage of it they won't think twice really. Why would they? They don't see far enough. They actually don't care further than that. Than their own person and maybe very closely related to them their, their maybe close family or some close friends and still it's always very difficult their relationships between each other. But they don't see it, they cannot care for what they don't see, so they just act naturally in a kind of easily abusive way. So now they see that you are ready to fight, that you are not there just to be sucked dry, you are ready to fight, no problem. Also between parentheses, if you are ready to fight, it also means you are ready to lose. You must be ready to lose also. That is something that makes you, in a certain sense, and very paradoxically, invincible. I mean, if you go into a situation and you actually, at the end of the day, can afford to lose, to lose in this situation and carry on with your life, you have a very strong stance. Because the other person that is there and, and has a fear of losing, something in this situation will be a lot more stressed and will be a lot less flexible. It will be more easy to manipulate this person through their fear of losing what they think they're losing, etc. So you're ready to fight, you're ready to lose also, you're ready. Okay, the, the, the encounter can begin on good terms, on like equal terms. Now. I don't really like this kind of encounters. I prefer an encounter where both parties, or all parties included, actually care for all other parties and are looking for the best solutions for everyone. Now, this is rather rare. And I do have it with certain people and it's fabulous. But with all these other people, instead of, as I said, complaining, complaining that they're not like that, just look at them as they are and decide what you want to do with it. So you're in your fight stance, ready, not aggressive, but ready to defend, ready to do what's necessary, knowing that they're not there for your benefit, they're not thinking of your benefit, they're not thinking of the general benefit, eh, and you're ready. Then probably, or they will start fighting, which means they can attack you with arguments which sometimes or oftentimes are rather stupid or they can attack you with personal attacks or whatever you are ready for it you know it can be like this so when it happens it's okay probably however 
most neurotypicals, once they feel they are in front of someone who is not there to be bullied, who won't let himself or herself be bullied or abused, they'll switch to a negotiating relationship. They'll negotiate, they try to negotiate. Now again, they won't negotiate fairly. It's not possible when you're mentally short-sighted. They will negotiate in the sense that they will try to hold as much as possible in their own little bubble and leave as little as possible for you. And again, it's up to you to fight. If you don't want all this stuff of fighting and negotiating and stuff like that, which is, it can be really unpleasant, you can just avoid it, but you'll have to avoid relationships with them. It's totally useless to over and over go towards these neurotypicals and hope totally unrealistically that they'll be fair, they'll care for you, they'll think of your needs and benefits also. It just won't happen. That's why they are neurotypicals. So to go back to the negotiation, you negotiate with them and you will have to, it will be another kind of fight, but like, like a business fight. They will try to get as much out of it as possible and you will have to make sure that your fair part is defended by you. They will not defend your fair part. You will have to defend it. Now, in my personal experience, how does one develop this stance? This kind of possible fight stance, I'm ready to fight. I found personally that I had to develop it and, and I'm still developing it. But I started to develop, it, to, to develop it at the same time that I started to take martial arts courses. Now, it's not cause and effect. It's a bit a chicken and egg uh, story of who was first. I actually, actually became ready to handle violence, not to wish it away, not to always avoid it, because it's unavoidable. It's there in their heads, it's there in their neurology, as it is in the neurology of a lot of animals. And because I became ready to handle it, it opened the door for me to study martial arts. While before that, I totally refused martial arts, because I thought violence creates violence. But it's actually neurologies that create violence. Certain violent or violent prone neurologies create violence. So with this martial art experiences, and I noticed this in myself, that I became ready, I observed it in me, I didn't decide it, but, but I observed in me that I became ready to fight. I simply observed that I could be closer to people, that I could just let them come to me, in front of me, and still be there. I'll fight you, no problem. I can fight you, if that's what you want. I can lose, I can win, but I'm ready to fight, no problem. And it actually, subtly, but in a very powerful way, changes every single encounter and every single relationship. Tell me what you think about it in the comments. If you have questions, etc., leave them also. A big, enormous thanks to all the people who like and share and subscribe. An even bigger thanks to the people who click my link and have a look uh, at my books, because that's what I write them for, right? For you to read them. And uh, see you next time. Bye.